Okay, guys, we're back. <laughs> um, haven't done a video in a while, but primary focus on today's video is going to be on circle cutting jig. And we're going to go into detail. And as far as circle cutting jig to cut the rosette. Now, um, I, I got a bunch of stuff over here. And I'm going to talk a lot in the beginning. Um, and we're going to actually go over layout as well, too, because I don't think I went into too much detail on, the, on uh, some of the previous um, videos. So we're just going to do the layout real quick on the soundboard. Um, we're going to focus on the circle cutting jig to cut the rosette. There was some discussion online recently on that. So I'm going to show you that jig. And the demo today is actually going to be cutting the rosette. Uh, there's different ways to cut. You know what? Let's just get into it. Okay. Um, so we're right here. And we're just going to start from the beginning. All right. And what I've done, and we got a soundboard over here. Again, I got a bunch of stuff set up for us today. So I actually laid out the center line on the soundboard. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna... I use my outside jig. So remember now, um, I'm gonna talk story at the beginning. The demo is probably gonna be, you know how we do it. We talk story and then we do the demo. And I don't say anything, but we're talking story right now. The demo is gonna be when you actually see me cutting the uh <laughs> the rosette channel uh, but for now just bear with me um if you guys don't want to hear me say anything about the layout and what we're doing by all means just go ahead and uh fast forward to this all right i've got my layout over here and um <clears throat> you know really what, what i really want to do is i really want to cut it out so Fast forward to this, when you see me come back with this, that's when I'm gonna be here. But right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this out real quick on the bandsaw. So let's do that. Uh, you guys really don't need to see me do that. And you know me, I don't edit, so. Okay, we're back sorry about that little detour for you guys so we don't need this jig anymore this is the outside jig all i got there for you guys is so we can um mark around the outside now i've already marked this as as far as the inside somewhere oh, go figure i marked it on the cutoff piece this is going to be my outside this is my inside so inside <coughs> I'm pretty sure I did a vid on this already as far as um, laying out the bracing. But you get to watch me do it right now. And, you know, this is more for, I've talked about it. Uh, let's just take some time and actually do it. Okay. So you saw me mark the center line at the top and then mark the center line at the bottom. Let's make sure we're in here. So once again, I just marked where the center, where the joint is here, and I marked where the joint is here at the top. I'm gonna line up the center lines on this uh, template. I guess I can call it a template. Let's uh, center us a little bit more so I know where we're at. And how's that? Okay, that looks good. <coughs> It doesn't take a whole lot to do this. What it did take a whole lot is to make the template. Template has to be, I don't want to say perfect, but because everything's based off of the template, yeah, you want to kind of know what you're doing with this template and making sure it's where it's supposed to be. Okay. All you do is mark, the, mark off the upper brace. Sound hole here. 
this, uh, I guess they call that a bridge brace. All right. I'm going to do the outside here. Um, the braces are going to cover up all of this. This is all on the inside anyway. And you're not going to see it. Well, you know, even if you put a mirror in it, you're not going to see it. And the bridge patch, of course. Now, the bridge patch, if you look inside, you might see the ends because I actually curve in the bridge patch. But we can take care of that. All right, this is the inside. Now, uh, what I bought just on a whim is this thing is called a an optical center punch. Kind of cool tool. Um, there's two punches in here. One is, in this one anyway, one is steeper than the other. Uh, this is obviously for wood. This is for metal, and it actually, I've used it a couple of times already. It works very well. Do we need this much accurate on a center punch? No. Uh, but, you know, those with the most tools wins, right? Anyway, um, here's the two optics here. I'm not going to be able to show you what it actually looks like on the inside as you're looking at it. Let me see if we can do this. All right. One of them has a cross. If you can see that cross right there, the other one is like a target, just a circle. So what I use is I use, really, I should use the, the circle because that's our mark right there. Um, why don't I do that? Let's try that. I'll use the circle for the circle. Okay, and all it is, is this piece right here has two holes in it but you only need one side that's what it's gonna look like oh, let's see if we can see this that would be pretty cool if we can I doubt if we can oh, there it is you can see that circle right there that is the actual marking let's see if we can line this up see what it looks like Oh, look at that. All right. What I've done was I've actually lined it up on my pencil mark. I don't know if you can see that. The pencil mark is outside and the circle is right on the inside. Okay, so let's do this. So we are just, all you got to do is once you have that there, you hold this down, pull out the optic. I got to make sure I put it in the right hole. Put in the punch, give it a little tap, and that is it. Optical center punch puts it right, there you go, in the middle. Fun stuff, guys. All right. <laughs> um, uh, I got this one off of Amazon. There's tons of them, different, different types. Uh, I'm glad I got the one with the less steep punch because I've actually uh, cut some aluminum, drilled some aluminum recently. But what we're going to do is what I also ordered was, and normally I, I wouldn't do this here, but we're, we're just kind of walking through things. Um, there you go. Pilot point. 316 bit. Now what the 316 bit does is it covers a number of things. It fits the 316 inch pin right here that I use for cutting my sound hole and it actually fits my circle cutting jig, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Let me get my glasses on, no fan, and we'll just um, cut this hole real quick. Normally, normally this is a drill press move for me. Got this old. All right, there we go. Nice hole right in the center. Okay, let's get rid of all of this. And all this is gonna do is, okay, I gotta make sure I cut the right side. This is the inside. We're gonna do the rosette channel. So obviously it's the face side that I wanna make sure the rosette is on. So we're just gonna put it on this side right here. Okay, and then just like that. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't fit. It's a different template that I had a while ago, and 
but this used to be my old shape. This is the new shape. Okay, let's talk about the circle cutting jig. This is what we're coming to. Again, I bought this from a guy online. I forgot his name. I apologize. It was off of uh, Ukulele Underground. I tried looking for it. I've marked it up a bunch, okay? I actually customized it. I, I tapered some holes in here so it fits onto my... Um, it fits onto my compact router. Now inside the compact router, I've already put in my 3 16 inch bit. I use a 3 16 inch bit and I've actually marked it here. Oddly enough, just for my memory, on this, I put 3 16 3 16 is the size of a pin. Conveniently enough, I use a 3 16 inch bit and you're gonna see where that comes into play. Um, I've marked this, let me do this. I marked, I, I've, got notes on here number seven sound hole number 17 rosette three sixteenths in, inch bit um you can see right here it says r and i put lines around it and if you look good let's see if i can get that up there it says 17 and you can count 15 16 that's number 17 for the rosette and then back over here you can see the number i don't know if you can see the number six seven this is number seven so number seven is the sound hole. It's a three, three sixteenths inch hole, inch hole, one sixteenth inch increment. So I can step in and out if I wanted to. And if I use a smaller bit, I can do custom sizes, but I use a three sixteenths inch bit because that is gonna be the size, the exact size of my rosette. Now, what I'm gonna do while I'm talking about the rosette is I'm just gonna screw this on. Um, it goes on one way. There's some holes in here. Um, there's some recessed and it'll go right in there like that. So I'm going to drop two screws right inside here. Now, for my rosette, I actually, um, if you've seen my rosettes before, it's, it's, I use what I call a true radio rosette. I stick with wood. I can use, and I've done many, um, shell rosettes before. I love gold mother of pearl just because everybody uses white. I've done Black Mother of Pearl, which is pretty cool too. Uh, okay. But I kind of switched to wood. Just, um, just one of those things that I did. And I always like the look of wood rosettes, especially on... Um, you take the wood rosette and you match the bindings. So anyway, that, that's what that looks like. So we're going to do some math over here. Around the rosette, we always put um, black, white, black, perfectly. And I say we, that's probably the entire luthier community. So this one just happens to be right at about 60 thousandths of an inch. Okay, I mean, you know, it's not perfect, but 60 thousandths. You guys can see that. Now, on my rosette, here's an off piece off an old one. It broke. Uh, but this is what it looks like when I do the radio rosette. Uh, it's a piece, and this one broke too, so I'm going to make some more. But it's a piece of coal, curly coal, bent the wrong way. And when I say the wrong way, what that means is this is actually the face of the coal. So let's get a piece of wood real quick. Uh, and we'll probably do another video on this later on. Uh, I had a piece that I was going to use. All right. Let's grab something. Here we go. Okay, so here's a piece of core, all right? And this is the face of the core right here. And you can see the curls, pretty cool. Um, the green, this is actually, the green is kind of running quarter. But this is the face of the core. Normally, when we bend core or when we bend anything, we are gonna cut it this way, right across here. And then we're going to bend it this, uh, on, this is going to be the edge. This is going to be the face. That's how we normally do sides because this is the showy side. But for the rosette, I want this showing. I want all these curls to go around the rosette. So what happens is I end up resawing it this way and then bending it the wrong way. And when you do that on curly cord, it gets very, very fragile and it starts falling apart. But what ends up happening, and in this piece in particular, this just becomes a joint. So if you've done rosettes that have joints before, 
and mother of pearl you see every single joint anyway this becomes a joint but being wood and i use hot hide glue the joint actually disappears you won't be able to see it um i done one recently i'm still sanding this down um this one we're probably not going to use i might have to redo it again but there's a joint over here that cracked but all through here there are also you can see joints that cracked here so this one didn't get tight enough probably going to redo this rosette that's why i didn't cut the sound hole when i redo it super easy because it's going to take out exactly what i put in um, and that's why i'm using this one it's actually on a tighter curve the one i had in that one was not tight enough so I, I gotta make sure I uh, up my game and make sure I get the tighter curves. But anyway, so what's gonna happen is, let's do some math, right? 60 thousandths on the black, white, black. It's gonna go in and out on the inside and the outside. Let's show you this. So I guess that's what it's gonna look like. Black, white, black on the inside, outside, and then on the middle, we have the wood, which is right at about 62, 63 thousandths, give or take. So if you do the math, 60, 60, 60, 180. Okay, a little bit more. 180 thousandths. 316 inch bit. Well, 1 16th. If we go to 1 16th, watch this. Just so you guys can, we'll do math on the micrometer here. And there we go. 1 16th of an inch. All right, if I change that to fraction, uh, decimal, 0 0.062 times three, 186. Sometimes it comes out, sometimes it doesn't, but let's do this. So we have a 3 16 inch bit, which is right there. And we change that to fraction. Right there, 186 thousandths of an inch. So 60, 60, 60, 186. But when you measure the actual 3 16 bit, which I did, it's about 190. So the channel is gonna be a little bit bigger, which is okay, because you can see what happens to the black white black it actually smashes and it actually and once i put um high glue inside all the water expands everything and gets super super tight in there all right so we did our layout okay you can see the layout over here what we're gonna do is we are now gonna move over to the other bench i am gonna do the rosette channel now Rosette channel. Got to make sure you don't cut all the way through this thing. So we're going to do about 60 thousandths of an inch. This is about 90 thousandths right now, I think. If we dig it in 60 thousandths of an inch, that'll be good. You know, that's enough to where we can sand down and, and trim it down from the top. Well, you want to see exactly what the soundboard is right now. Well, this one's kind of thick. It's at 112, so, so we got to take it down a lot. So we're probably going to go in a little bit deeper than that. Easy to do. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's move over and let's cut. So as a reminder, now this is upside down. I need to go to number 17 for the rosette. So I got to make sure I identify where 17 is and I have it upside down. 17 is over here. You can see this is number 7. 17 is over here. It's farther out from the from the bit. Okay, so let's move over and then set up just so I can make a mess on this side of the shop instead. Okay. So for you, those of you that follow, this is the demo. I am going to shut up. We'll go through the demo and then we'll come back and close it up.
Okay, guys. Uh, you saw me dicking around with the um, with the uh, with the measurements as far as the depth is concerned. And you know, sometimes you gotta have confidence in what you're measuring. I just thought it was getting a little bit too deep as far as um, as far as the depth is concerned. Um, I'm gonna show you how deep I, we we ended up cutting this. So this is actually about 88 thousandths of an inch, All right? Um, deep probably more like 86 is about a two thousandths a little bit off on the depth measurement but what's gonna happen is um, when we put this in here's my main concern is it deep enough for this when it goes in and the answer is no well actually let's find out that yeah, is right at about 81 thousandths okay so here's the deal this is gonna be too shallow the depth is going to be too, I mean, I'm sorry, the depth is going to be too deep for the rosette. However, since this soundboard is, actually, this is, uh, I'm redoing a soundboard for another instrument, and I didn't thickness it, it down enough. But we're going to take this down from the top anyway. I may do that before I actually, well, you know what? I'm going to try something new. I'm actually going to inlay it, uh, inlay it deep and then take down the top and bring it down to the, uh, um, bring it down to the top of the rosette. But anyway, focus on this one was um, just back up over here. And hopefully you guys can see. So anyway, focus on this was uh, the actual cutting of the rosette channel. Now, I do this just because I've landed on 3 sixteenths of an inch. I like that channel. I like that size. Some guys do really, really big channels on ukulele. Not my thing. I, I like just enough, um, you know, everybody's different. Now, Stu Mac, there's other places that, and even the jig that I have. If I use a smaller bit, I can step up 1 16th of an inch increments, if I think if I use a 1 16th inch bit. I haven't done the math on it, but I, I can make different size channels with the circle cutting jig. Figure out what works well for you. Um, am I lazy doing this? Well, mine's come out the same, exactly the same all the time. Can I do custom ones? For sure. I, nobody's ever asked me for one other than the true radio rosette because it's such a pain in the ass. Sorry about that. To make to bend the wood in the wrong direction is kind of unique. I haven't seen it. Uh, I actually, I haven't seen anyone do it yet. I'm sure it's done, but that's my thing. So, uh, guys, and for my sons, if you want to do a true radio rosette, we'll probably do another video on actually bending the wood. That one's going to be painful to watch because it actually takes a long time. Uh, other than that, we'll catch you next time, guys.